Hi, welcome to Meet Me in the Boobies. I am Noel T. Manning II, uh, spending time with you uh, through Zoom. Uh, we, we really do appreciate this uh, Zoom opportunity that we're having uh, in, these, uh, in these weeks. And I think one of the things it's done is really helped us to think a little bit about bringing in guests from outside that we've always wanted to do before, but we've never had a chance to do that. When I say outside, I mean uh, outside of our typical viewing area. Uh, Jackie K. Cooper uh, is our guest today. And uh, Jackie Kay, we appreciate you being here. Uh, you are a CEFCA member, Southeastern Film Critics Association member, and also a Critics' Choice member, and probably a few others. So, uh, so thanks for being here with us. Well, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, Jackie Kay is here, and also Thomas Manning. You will see Thomas Manning with us as well. He's back. Uh, we, we just can't get rid of him uh, for some I reason. I know, yeah, for uh, some but reason we, or but another. We did, but we did get rid of Greg, um, and, and <laughs> we, we were supposed to have a phone tree, and Thomas was supposed to let Greg know what time the show was going to be happening, and Thomas, you told me that you forgot. Is that the truth? Honestly, I just didn't want to have Greg on the show, so yeah, that, that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Take, the, take the fifth, Thomas. Take the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we do we do miss Greg, and and we've had a, a little bit of viewer mail. We've also been missing Tim, who uh, normally works behind uh, Mission Control. Tim's been uh, been gone during this uh, self isolation. I think he's taking the self isolation a little too seriously, but uh, we do appreciate anybody who's uh, deciding to tune in with us right here at C19 TV, and if you're watching. The stream online that's c19.tv and if you're listening to the podcast version through wgwg.org so we appreciate it however you choose to spend time with us well jackie k cooper you've got this youtube mm -hmm. channel that's got like 50 million followers or something it's pretty nuts 50 uh, and million in one <laughs> <laughs> well uh if you would give us a little background about where first where people can find you uh, and also uh, let us know uh how you got into to film criticism and then thomas i think might have a question or two as well. Well, my life has been just a series of accidents uh, as far as this part of the career you know, takes part. But I've always loved movies. Grew up in a small town in South Carolina, had a one movie theater, played four different movies a week. I was there every time, one on Monday and Tuesday, then one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, Friday, one on Saturday. But uh, my best friend's father ran the theater and so I was right there, just from an early age, loved movies, and it stayed with me, uh, you know, as I, as I grew into adulthood. And I went to college and then went to law school, studied law, got admitted to the bar, and I uh, started, uh, I was working for the government as an attorney. But I was sitting in my office one day at Robbins Air Force Base, which is a base in Georgia, and I was looking at the base newspaper and it showed the base theater and what movies were going to be played there. And I thought, I've seen all those movies because they played in town before they played on the base. Right. So I thought, well, this will be fun. And I just wrote down a little comments about each one and sent it over to the newspaper and said, you know, hey, you know, this is just my opinion of these movies I've seen. And they wrote back and said, hey, why don't you do that every week for us? We'll send you the list of the names. And so I kind of stuck my toe in the water that way. And then the local newspaper, I, I was living in Perry, Georgia, where I still live. Uh, the editor there um, said, came to me and he said, we'd like for you to write a column. And I said, what about? And he said, what do you want to write a column about? And I said, I, I don't know. And he said, well, what do you like to do? And I said, I like to go to the movies. And he said, well, then write a column about entertainment. So he started, and then I got picked up by another newspaper, and then this guy who owned a series of newspapers picked me up, got into some magazines, started doing some celebrity interviews, and um, everything just rolled along. Uh, and I moved out to California for a couple of but also wrote for a newspaper out there, went down to Hollywood, went to the screenings, greatest time ever. Yeah. And then came back to Georgia, and was working for the government, but got a local, the CBS affiliate called me and said, would you come in on Friday mornings at six o'clock and give the entertainment forecast? And so I got into TV. That yeah. place. See, it's just all this new, you know, no, <laughs> no plotting out, no plotting out in any sense of the word. And so things went on like that. Uh, I decided I was going to write some books about my life. I uh, wrote a book in 1999. And then pretty much 
couple of years after that, decided to retire from the government and just concentrate on my writing. But I still did an uh, entertainment rundown for YouTube. It would just be you know, a little quick thing, two minutes of what movies were coming out, et cetera, and put that on. I had 136 subscribers. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was the greatest thing in the world. 136 people actually followed me every week. And I was happy as a pig in the mud, you know, doing that. <laughs> and then suddenly, uh, a year ago, uh, my son came over, we met Sean, my son. And he came over, he said, Dad, I got to show you something. And I said, no, yeah, I want to talk to you about something too. And he said, no, this is really important. I need to show you this. And I'm, you know, I was like, no, mine's important. And I want to tell you. And we, but he insisted and we looked and the subscribers were the little, the little thing telling me how many subscribers I had was going crazy. It was like watching the odometer, uh, <laughs> 150, 200, 300, 400. And by the, that was on a Friday night. And by Saturday morning, we had 5,000 subscribers. Wow. Wow. And I didn't know why. And okay, I had so no, I no, ask, no idea. Yeah, I was going to ask, was there, was there some reason, was there something that you did that week that, that could have made that happen? You don't know. I was just, I was so charming. You couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing. What had happened is that somebody named Maxwell had been just scanning YouTube and saw this poor old guy who's out there and says, he's been doing entertainment rundowns for like 15 years and he's got 136 subscribers. And he said, I thought they were pretty good. So he gave a shout out, Thomas, you may know more about this. No, no you may too, I didn't know a thing. He gave a shout out to Reddit. Yeah, I've never heard of Reddit. That's right. Yep. And then Reddit gave a shout out to PewDiePie. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, has like 8 million. Yeah. Right. Right. And PewDiePie gave me a shout out to all of his subscribers. And that's where all this wow. came in. I didn't do anything. Yeah. They did it all. Yeah. And I, what I found out, we finally went up to about 151,000. And we've dropped off now. We're down to around 130,000. But uh, I found it. The guy, Maxwell, is a 16 year old kid living in Boston, high school student. Wow. And it was just, and I asked him, I, you know, we corresponded on email, and, all, and I said, Maxwell, why me? And he said, I guess you were just in the right place at the right time. Well, you know. Wow. Then that, that's so, how it happens. That's how it happens a lot of times is that. You know, you go about yeah, you go about your business and things just click for you. And and Thomas, I, I haven't had a chance to do this on the show, but congratulations to Thomas Manning, who is uh, now officially a member of the North Carolina Film Critics oh. Association. We haven't had a chance young to age. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's definitely an honor for sure. But I've been very thankful for the opportunities presented to me by people like Noel Manning, as well as uh, Mr. Douglas Davidson over at Elements of Madness, who we've had on the show. So, I've, yeah, it's been pretty awesome so far. Well, Thomas, I know yeah. you had a question for Jackie, too, you wanted to ask, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I was just wondering what it's been like for you to adapt to the changing landscape and technology, uh, especially in the realm of crims, uh, film criticism, and kind of just has there been kind of a challenge for you, or has it been somewhat of a smooth transition? Just what's that been like for you? You mean coming into, like, these type of venues with – is that what you're um, talking about, Thomas? Just generally over the past few decades, um, whether that be <laughs> decades the, uh, and decades, <laughs> <laughs> whether that be about perspective, <laughs> yeah, whether that be the prevalence of the internet and YouTube, uh, that's where you looks like you really build up your bases on YouTube. And just what's that been like for you? Well, it's funny because when I started out, it was all newspaper. You know, I was in the newspapers. You know, you know, I wrote a column called That's Entertainment, and I would type it up. I, I mean, I didn't even have a computer when I started. It was on a manual typewriter. I would type this thing yeah. up, reproduce it, drive. My wife would drive to different newspapers in other cities close to me and, and hand them the column for the week. I think I got between 5 and $10 a column and, you know, that type of thing. And then when, when computers actually came in and I could just sit there and transmit, mm -hmm. that was the greatest thing in the world. I mean, just unbelievable. And then, as you were talking, Noel, 
this type of thing, Zoom, has given us as critics an opportunity to interview people who, you know, I used to have to fly to California to do an interview or fly to New York to do an interview or, or whatever. Those were great times, but now being able just to sit in the comfort of your home mm -hmm. and have these conversations and it's one-on-one, -on -one, there's no difference, you know, in it. That's what, you know, that's what I love. But as to your question, Thomas, I am the most technologically stunted person that you'd ever want to meet. I have a, my youngest son lives in town and he is the one who directs my shows and films my shows, does all the technical stuff. And I just sit in a chair and, and talk, which is just fantastic. You know, I've enjoyed my career. I've enjoyed the trips I've been able to make, you know, the people I've gotten to interview and everything else. But to be able to sit here and now, and I'm sure y'all see this too, but during the coronavirus thing, I'm getting links to so much more mm -hmm. that I can watch on, you know, my TV or computer rather than, you know, there are no movie theaters to go out to. So that's just, everything adapts and transitions and, and goes. Uh, and it's open, what I love is, you know, we're, several different generations represented here and it's it's there's a place for everybody yeah i mean when when i first when, when i hit the 150,000 subscribers then i got called up by tv stations and newspapers and then you know and i'd always kind of not advertise my age too much and the first thing i saw was tune in at seven o'clock tonight 77 year old goes <laughs> viral. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, wait, you know. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. But everything that was written was like, oh, my gosh, can you imagine this? Somebody that old gets to, <laughs> gets to do this. But, you know, the great thing is, you know, different factions embrace different things. And I have the greatest subscribers in the world. I mean, they are just unbelievable they you know they communicate with me send me comments ask me you know would you review this would you talk about this whatever and uh, as you can tell you know my hands are always going <laughs> yeah. you know, it, but it's it's been it's been a wild journey yeah and like i said not not planned out in any sense uh you know it's just like one opportunity led to another right. opportunity right. uh and i don't want to you know digress too much on all this but a a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago, uh, when I had retired and I was thinking I was just going to, you know, focus on my books or whatever. I'm sitting here and I get a phone call and uh, it's a guy who books me for speaking engagements. And he, he said, Jackie, I've got great news. I got great news for you. And I said, what? He said, the Huffington Post wants to get you to write for them. Wow. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he said, no, they call me. I said, what did they say? And he said, they said they're the Huffington Post. And I said, I could call you and tell you I'm the Huffington Post. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, they gave me a number. They want you to call them. And I said, yeah. And if I were to call, they'd get the biggest laugh. Whoever yeah. that is would be laughing from here to eternity. And he said, you're not going to call them? And I said, no, I'm not going to call them. I said, I'm in Perry, Georgia. The Huffington Post does not need me in Perry, Georgia. <laughs> and so he hung up. And then a few minutes later, he called back and he said, I called them. I called them. They really are the Huffington Post. You've got to call them. And <laughs> wow. Said, okay. I'm, you know, this is stupid. You know? Yeah. And so he gives me the number. I called and they said, Huffington Post. <laughs> yeah. I said, wow. This is, this is Jackie Cooper. And he said, the guy said, oh, yeah, Mr. Cooper, we've been, we've been waiting and hoping you'd call. And I said, no, wait a minute. I'm Jackie K. Cooper. And he said, yeah. And I said, no, I think you have me confused with somebody else. I said, I'm Jackie K. Cooper. I said, I don't know who you're looking for. And he said, well, don't you have a website, www.jackiekcooper.com? And I said, yeah. He said, don't your reviews appear on Rotten Tomatoes? And I said, yeah. And he said, nope, you're the one we're looking for. Wow, wow. And I said, I said, have you ever read anything that I've written? And he said, well, we tried to do our research, you know, to get as much background as we could. 
And I said, well, the reason I say that is I said, you're a little bit liberal. And I'm a little bit conservative. <laughs> and he said, you know, that's why we want you. He wow. said, we want all viewpoints. Wow. And I wrote for them for over 10 years. Wow. And they never restricted anything for me to cover. I covered a lot of faith-based films that, yeah. you know, they would never think would see the light of day. I'm super, super people. Wow. But somehow, like you said, no, yeah. somehow they came across it and thought, hey, why don't we try this? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, we are, we are at that midway point for the intermission. We're going to come back, and after that, we're going to review a, a couple of films. Probably only going to have time for a couple. Uh, this has been great, Jackie. Really glad to have Jackie K. Cooper, our guest here. So, Jackie K., where can people find you online? Are they the YouTube channel? How do they find it? Go, just go to the YouTube channel and type in Jackie K. Cooper, and it will take you directly to my website. Awesome. And Jackie K. Cooper has uh, all sorts of interviews and things there you can find out. After the break, uh, Thomas and I are going to come back and review Spencer Confidential. Uh, it's a Netflix original directed by Peter Berg. And also, we're going to, Jackie Kay and I are going to talk about how to build a girl. Uh, all that, and we'll see if there's any. It's time a movie. For... It's a movie. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right after this quick intermission, right here on Meet Me at the Movie. Hello students, my name is Jason Hurst and I have the honor and privilege of serving as president of Cleveland Community College. As you all know, this has certainly been an interesting semester related to uh, the pandemic. I want you to know how incredibly proud I am of each one of you for enduring and being persistent to get through your classes. I know this has been a trying time. Many of you have been caregivers. You've had to keep your children. Uh, you've had to work from home, you've had to teach school, and you've had to endure and overcome a lot of obstacles to be able to complete your classes. But I want you to know we're incredibly proud of you, and we look forward to seeing you back this summer semester or this fall semester. Congratulations on your accomplishments. Hi, I'm Jennifer Harrell, your host for FUR, Your Information is provided to entertain and educate you about all things pet throughout Cleveland County. We have various hosts join me each month on the show to talk about dogs, cats, reptiles, snakes, and even horses. But we want you to stick through to the second half of the show because then we will have pets live on our set that you can adopt to be a part of your forever family. For your information, once a month on C19 TV and online at C19.TV. They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. Hello and welcome back to Meet Me at the Movies. I am Nolte Manning II, along with Thomas Manning and also Jackie K. Cooper. Uh, check out Jackie K. Cooper's work on uh, YouTube. Just type in Jackie K. Cooper. You'll find all of his uh, movie reviews, entertainment rundown, and all sorts of stuff. And Jackie, it is uh, you do weekly stuff, right? I, well, I put up three to four new videos every week. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, Thomas, uh, you and I got a chance to check out a film that's been out for a little while on Netflix. It's a Netflix original uh, directed by Peter Berg, uh, starring uh, Mr. Wahlberg, who was one of the, uh, he was one of these singers and dancers back in the 90s, but yet he's become this pretty incredible little movie star. He's, he's making a name for himself. Uh, and the movie is called Spencer Confidential. It's uh, loosely based on the uh, famous uh, series uh, that was out several years ago called Spencer for Hire. And uh, the reviews are not so good about, they're not, they're not so positive uh, with this particular film, but you and I uh, really seem to enjoy ourselves when watching this. Yeah, I don't know what that says about our, <laughs> uh, our efficiency as film critics, but I think we had a very fun time with this one, especially for, you know, a Sunday night, relaxing after the weekend, and just, it's a throwback buddy comedy. Winston Duke and Mark Wahlberg, two polar opposite personalities, but just kind of seeing how they played off of one another was outrageously entertaining at some points. Um, and I don't think either one of us had realized just how massive Winston Duke is, but he really gets to show off his physicality in this film in certain moments. And, uh, you know, you think Mark Wahlberg, he's a pretty, he's a pretty fit guy, but compared to Winston Duke, I don't think Mark Wahlberg can hold a candle to Winston Duke. It's, um, so I just love to see their interactions together. Um, I love Peter Berg's 
just passion for the city of Boston. I think yes. he loves Boston as much as like Martin Scorsese loves New York or as much as Quentin Tarantino loves uh, Los Angeles or Hollywood. And Boston isn't really a city we get to see uh, portrayed in film as much, but I think it's pretty awesome to see Peter Berg shining a light on that region. Um, and uh, like a few years ago, we had Patriots Day, which was his um, love letter to the city of Boston and its uh, resilience in the face of the tragic Boston bombings yes. at the Boston Marathon 2013. So, uh, you know, it's this one hasn't gotten good reviews. It's not very original. It's definitely stuff we've seen before. It's fairly formulaic, but uh, it gave me just what I was looking for when we happened to stumble upon it on Netflix. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think it was just a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, it was a you know, one part drama, one part action, and one part comedy. It was an interesting mix of all three of those. And the comedy felt organic. It felt real. And you hear me say authentic so many times when I'm drawn to comedy that doesn't feel stilted and doesn't feel just forced. And this one didn't feel forced. I think everything that happened would be almost as if uh, there were people that you would see and say, yep, I know somebody who would do that. Or I could see myself doing that. Uh, this movie was just, it was, it was really just a blast to just hang on for the ride. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad we took the time to, to spend time with it. Uh, what other thoughts do you want to share with us? High on action, a lot of stunts, a lot of action. I mean, like fist fight action, as yeah, you would expect yeah. in those kind of movies. What else do you want to make sure you share before we move on to the next film? Um, well, there were many scenes where I just had like an audible reaction where I just yelled out loud. I was like, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe they did this. And of course, it was way over the top. And uh, there's nothing subtle about this movie at all. But um, it's... It's that's kind of right up my alley, which I can understand how other people it wouldn't sit with them well. But uh, for me, I was I just absolutely adored it. So, and yeah. what is your rating for this, Thomas? Solid B. Uh, you know, it's heavy on the brawn, not so much on the brain, but uh, it's still <laughs> it's still uh, definitely a really it's just a yeah. real ride. Yeah, I, I agree, and it, well worth the time. Uh, you know, it, it was it was I think it was two hours long, and it, it didn't feel uh, overinflated. <sighs> Uh, I would, you and I, when it was over, you and I said, hey, if they have another film with these characters, we'd watch it. And I think that says something whenever you're watching a film like this. So I'm with you. A, a solid B rating uh, for me, uh, for the movie uh, Spencer Confidential, now available on Netflix. Well, there, uh, we're not going to teach you how to build a girl, but Jackie Kay and I are going to do a quick review of this new IFC film uh, starring uh, Beanie Feldstein, uh, who we, we, Thomas and I both loved in Booksmart last summer. Uh, so, Jackie Kay, give me your quick thoughts on this on this film. Well, I am not a big Beanie Feldstein, you know, appreci I'm not an appreciator of her talent. I, I did see her in Booksmart, and I also saw her in Lady Bird. I know that she's been on Broadway. She was in Hello, Dolly, the Bette Midler production. And she's Josh Gad's sister. You know, that's a big claim to fame. <laughs> but I thought this movie was the story of a young girl and how she had a career in writing. It's based on a true story, I think. And um, to carry the movie, I felt like she had to have, the person had to have a really dynamic personality because just about every scene in the film is focused on her. And I didn't think she carried the load. Okay. I just, I, it, it plotted along with me and I just, I wasn't appreciative of it much at all. Okay. Well, well for but me, you. Well, well, for me I, I felt like I was watching uh, uh, three acts. I almost felt like if, if Shakespeare had found a way to create a type of uh, movie, he would do something like this because it starts off very much like a British comedy at the beginning, and you, you feel like you're drawn into that. And then at some point, it, it, it immediately turns to this tragedy. A kind of a tragic tale of someone rising to power and someone, you know, not caring kind of who they hurt along the way. And then it ends up as a redemption and forgiveness story. And, uh, you know, kind of all along the way, you, you kind of see the, the consequences that can come along with the decisions we make. And yeah, it was based on a true story. Um, I, I found it almost a, as a cross between the movie Almost Famous and Fighting With My Family. I thought it had some interesting mix similarities uh, between those two. Uh, I, I do think the balance of it was a little off-putting for me. I, I, I know what they were going for. I thought it was very ambitious what they were going for, but uh, I was still kind of drawn to it. But well, why Beanie Felsen? Why did they come all the way to America to get a totally American actress 
to play a role of a British person, and she's only an American member of the cast. It reminded me of the Renee Zellweger, Bridget Jones thing. And there was a lot of criticism, if you'll remember, when they did that. But there are a million British actresses who could have played this part, in my estimation. And, and why and pick her and as an American to do a... She does a good accent. I'm not yeah. criticizing her accent enough. Yes, but I she is you. very American. Think and course, and I couldn't figure out why they bad. wanted Just to do that. And she is not at the point, in my opinion, of her career that she enhances the movie that much that she would be like a draw of a large proportion of an audience. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. I, I can see that absolutely. And um, why they chose her, I don't know. I, I, you know, it um, it worked for me because in the beginning of the film, you see somebody who is a complete outsider who doesn't have any friends um, outside of the, uh, the fantasy friends on her wall, ghosts from the past and visions from the past of, of famous people. Uh, and and I, I will say also another thing that kind of reminded me of Shakespeare was, was that kind of interaction with the ghost and the monologues. You know, she would have mm -hmm. monologues and there were times she would look at the camera and that, that is very Shakespearean uh, in nature. Yeah, could they have chosen somebody else? Absolutely. Um, could they have done a better job? Yeah, probably, but it didn't distract from me. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm a big fan of music and I love the movie Almost Famous and I, I was, looking for something more like this. This was not what I was expecting uh, in this film uh, at all, um, but I still walked away continuing to think about it. And, um, and sometimes when I continue to think about films, like they can't escape me. I'm like, okay, there's something here. And then the deeper I got, I realized, okay, I do appreciate this a lot more than, than I thought I did. So what, what is, the, go ahead. I was just gonna say though, the woman who, or the character that Beanie Felstein portrays in real life must've been a dynamic writer because she was able to open doors and move her career in an amazing way. So, and I, yeah. I've heard people, I think you may have posted, somebody did posted a statement of the real person, you know, kind of philosophy on life and it yep. sounded good. Yeah, absolutely. And it was uh, based on a, a story that she wrote. There's three books, there's how to build a girl. And then there's two other books, part of a trilogy. And uh, I'm, I'm actually intrigued to go w read these books now uh, after watching this. And sometimes I think that's the, the mark of some. Jackie Kay is not. Uh, you don't have to, to worry. Back. You can get it from the library. I won't be checking it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So w what is your rating for this, uh, for this movie? <laughs> D. I'm sorry? As in dog. D, D as, as in as dog. dog. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I am, uh, I am definitely at the upper end. I'm giving it a B uh, as in Boy, uh, uh, I think it was ambitious, and I, I appreciated that. Well, Jackie K. Cooper, we really appreciate you spending time with us. This has been us. great. This has really been fun. Definitely want to have you back, and uh, if, if you're up for it, I would love to have you back. I love, absolutely. All right. Well, we always close with a quote of the week, but before we do that, I do want to make sure that people know how to find you, Jackie, so you would once again tell them how to find you. Just go to YouTube and type in Jackie K. Cooper and go to my YouTube page, and if you would, become a subscriber. Awesome. And uh, Thomas, people can find your work on Elements of Madness, right? And where else? Uh, also on uh, the rundownonmovies.com. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, you can check us out uh, online always uh, at uh, c19.tv, and if you're watching this through cable at c19tv, and downloading the podcast through wgwg.org. Uh, I will leave you with a quote of the week, and uh, this does come from How to Build a Girl. Dolly Wilde said, they say that flying is the safest mode of transport, but surely that's walking? So until next time, I'm Noel T. Manning II for Jackie K. Cooper and for Thomas Manning, and for this week, that's a wrap. How to build a girl.